Algebra 2, Unit 7, Lesson 5, Graphs and Transformations of Polynomials. In this lesson, we want to be able to sketch the graph of a polynomial function without using a graphing calculator and make and describe transformations of polynomial functions. We've already made some sketches, but we can now find more types of roots than what we had before. So to sketch a polynomial function, I'll remind you that we put the real zeros. They don't have to be rational. They can also be the irrational, all those we would have to put approximately. We will also find the y-intercept of the graph. Determine the end behavior as if we did before. And now to improve it, we can find the value between those zeros, any particular value, to see generally you would like one sort of in the middle to know where that function will go. But typically we'll pick integers to make it easier. But it should be somewhere between the zeros. And then I'll remind you that multiplicity, if it's there just once, it will pass through as a line width. Multiplicity 2 means it will touch as a quadratic and then go back in the same direction. Multiplicity 3 means it would pass through as a cubic. Fourth will also touch like a quartic, which is similar to a quadratic. So any even one will just touch and go back in the same direction. But fourth degree and sixth degree will be flatter than a quadratic. So it says sketch a graph of this polynomial function. First of all, we know that the possible rational roots are the factors of this, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8, divided by the factors of these. Well, since it's a 1, it doesn't give us any extras, so those are the only possible rational zeros. Trying 0 gives minus 1 as a 0, so you would simply try the different ones if you weren't allowed a graphing calculator. Or if you were, you would find a possibility as a starting point. Bring down the 1, multiply those, write that down, add, multiply, write it down, add, multiply those, write it down, and then add. 0, of course, confirms that it is a 0. The bottom row, x squared plus 2x minus 8, is x plus 4 times x minus 2. So the entire polynomial, I have to include this one as well. The 0 of minus 1 gives me an x plus 1, so I would get f of x equals x plus 1 times x plus 4 times x minus 2. The zeros are now minus 1, minus 4, and positive 2, which I have placed on my graph. This has n behavior of the right side up and the left side down. The y-intercept is minus 8, so I have put that here. And because I know this n goes here and this n comes down, I know I have to go up like this. But now we've already got one point here in between, and we know that the higher low point should be approximately there where the midpoint is of our two zeros. The point to be here approximate, but we don't know how high it goes. So if we put in a point in between there, and I could pick either minus 2 or minus 3, I pick minus 2 and I put it in that function, I will find that that's about 8. And I know then it goes probably a little bit higher than that. So I have, because that's not the midpoint, so I went a little bit higher that and did my approximate graph for my polynomial. Now we've already know how to make transformations in general, but we want to look at specific examples for our polynomial functions. Make sure that you factor out any horizontal shrink or stretch before you decide how it's been shifted left or right, because they don't really work like we think they do. Remember that the x ones work the opposite, so in order to know how much it shifts, we have to first have that horizontal stretch or shrink factored out of that. So if I want minus f of x plus 3 minus 4, I know that this shifts at left 3, reflects across the x-axis, and goes down 4. But what would that function be? Well, x plus 3 means I put x plus 3 in this function. And then I'm putting a minus on the outside and subtracting 4. So that's minus on the outside of that cubing, minus 4. Using the binomial theorem would give me this. And then I take the opposite of that and subtract 4 to get this polynomial. If I want f of 1 half x plus 2 plus 3, again, to know what that transformation is, I'm first going to factor out that 1 half. So I would take the 1 half out of there and get x plus 4. So that's a 1 half of x plus 4 and then cube. So I could describe this as what? So with horizontal stretches, those actually should be done before the shifts of left or right. So this is a horizontal stretch of factor 2. Remember, it's the opposite. It looks like we're dividing, but we're really multiplying. And then we're shifting left 4 and up 3. Or because this is cubed, we can cube the 1 half and bring it out here. And then describe this as shifting left 4, a, hor a vertical shrink of factor 1 8, and then shift up 3. If we have a parent such as this, which is more complicated, and then we want to compare it with another one, how did that shift? 
we have to sort of try to figure it out. If we subtract 2 from this and subtract 2 from this, that will give us these. So that means that's what we did to our function. And then we also have a minus in the front of that, so there had to be a minus. So this transformation shifts it 2 to the right, and it reflects across the x-axis. So if I were to graph this function, I would take the original one, which has zeros at minus 3 and 1, and y-intercept of 9 if I put 0 in there. So I did a polynomial that goes through there. I could, of course, get a better graph by finding out some point in between here, as I believe I did, knowing that it went up to about 18 or 19 there. And then this particular one would shift it 2 to the right and reflect. So shifting 2 to the right and reflecting would give us this graph. If I now want to compare these two, well, it obviously shifted it up to at the end, but what did this part do? If I add 1 to each of these, if I add 1 to this, that will give me an x plus 4, and if I add 1 to this, that will give me an x squared. So we added 1 inside the function, and then we added 2 on the outside of that function, so it shifted left 1 and up 2. So if I could take this original graph, I would go left 1 and up 2 for each of those points, giving this as my transformed graph.